The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good day, I'm Elena Rusk. A woman accused of driving under the influence when she crashed into a home on Taft Highway, seriously injuring several people, including a child, has been now charged with three felonies. Court records show 26-year-old Madison Williams is charged with two DUI injury offenses and a charge of causing an inhabited dwelling to burn. The crash happened about 12.30 a.m. on September 14th when the CHP says Williams' vehicle plowed into a home at Old River Road and Taft Highway. The house caught fire, but officials say the people inside did manage to escape. However, family members said Prince Deep Joshan, his wife, his father, and 21-month-old son Rohan Deep Joshan were all hurt when the home's ceiling fell on them. A family member told 17 News the toddler suffered broken bones and internal injuries. The CHP saying that driver, Williams, suffered minor injuries. Her arraignment scheduled for October 6th. And a woman who in 2004 pleaded no contest to a murder charge in the death of a 22-month-old boy has been denied a motion for resentencing this week and will continue serving 15 years to life in prison. 57-year-old Coyetta Cooper has repeatedly denied harming the child, Raymonte Bailey, who she was caring for along with his four siblings. Cooper said she pleaded no contest to second-degree murder only because she faced possible convictions on first-degree murder and other charges if the case went to trial. You can read much more on this story on KGAT.com. All right, well, now to an update to another case we've been following. The 15-year-old boy charged in connection to a fire that took the lives of two Porterville firefighters will spend the next six months in juvenile hall for it. A Tulare County judge handed down the sentence yesterday, as well as eight to ten months of probation with grief and PTSD counseling. The boy sentenced for setting the Porterville Library on fire in 2020. That fire killed Captain Raymond Figueroa and firefighter Patrick Jones. The families of those fallen firefighters say this punishment doesn't fit the crime. I'm really, really disgusted uh, to where I have to hold back on making certain comments. The ruling, although it was not near what we think it should have been, um, at least they didn't, he didn't send the defendant home. Now, the district attorney originally charged two teens with first degree murder for these deaths, but the judge dropped those murder charges. Well, in 17 business news, stocks are back to falling on Wall Street again as worries about a possible recession and rising bond yields put the squeeze back on the markets. P500 dropped to its lowest level since late 2020 earlier this morning and was 2.1% lower in midday trading. The washout has the index on track to erase its big rally from yesterday. For markets to really turn higher, analysts say investors will need to see a break from the high inflation that has swept the world. But that hasn't arrived yet, and even more data is coming in today showing the opposite. But in better news, a Strata Credit Union is opening its fourth branch in Wasco to provide needed financial services to that rural community. They hosted a groundbreaking earlier this morning as the credit union's CEO says Wasco is a city of nearly 30,000 residents, but they're only served by one bank branch. The U.S. per capita bank branches to population size is usually about 30 branches per 100,000 people. So Wasco and many other cities in Kern County are underbanked. And this week, a Bakersfield restaurant, actually, excuse me, this afternoon, a Bakersfield restaurant will honor the memory of a beloved local man and help his family out in the aftermath of his death. 45-year-old Bly Dean Brown crashed with an SUV at the intersection of Stockdale Highway and Gosford Road earlier this month. He died at the scene. Officials say he was wearing a helmet. Today, Sonder on Brim Hall will donate a portion of all their proceeds to Brown's family. You can make reservations on Open Table. Meanwhile, Pfizer asking the FDA to expand use of its updated COVID-19 booster shot for kids ages 5 to 11. 
Approximately 4.4 million Americans have already received one of the updated boosters since they rolled out earlier this month for anyone over age 12. And just like with Pfizer's original vaccine, elementary school aged children would get a third of the dose for the updated booster. The FDA is expected to decide soon. Pfizer and its partner BioNTech announced this week they have begun a study of the updated booster in kids younger than five. And continuing your health watch, the American Heart Association and Adventist Health are hosting a back to school health and wellness block party today. It's happening at Adventist Health Delano in the parking lot near their main entrance from 430 to 7 this afternoon into this evening. The family friendly event includes music, special guest appearances, while of course offering the community tools and resources designed to improve understanding of heart and brain health. There will be free health screenings, including blood pressure checks and training training like hands-only CPR demonstrations. Materials will be available in both English and Spanish. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. Investigators releasing shocking new information following the deadly shootout between an allegedly abducted 15-year-old girl, her father, and San Bernardino Sheriff's deputies. Officers now say Anthony Graziano and his daughter Savannah had been living together out of his truck and hotels for several weeks. They also say Savannah was with Graziano when he shot and killed his estranged wife, the girl's mother, Tracy Martinez. Now, initially, investigators thought Savannah had then been abducted after the murder, but when sheriff's deputies caught up with the pair, a gunfight broke out. Officials confirming Savannah, who was wearing a tactical vest and helmet, was armed and shot at the deputies. Savannah and her father both killed in that gunfight. Authorities are investigating whether the teen was shot by deputies or her father or both. Well, making news around the world, the body of a famed U.S. extreme skier who fell from the world's eighth highest mountain has been recovered. On Monday, Hillary Nelson was skiing down from the summit of Mount Manaslu with her partner when she fell. Rescuers searching by helicopter found Nelson's body yesterday, which was then flown to Kathmandu. Now to the capital as farm workers across the state are declaring a major victory after Governor Newsom signed a bill they say will give them more union rights. Supporters say AB 2183 would make it easier for farm workers to cast ballots remotely in union elections. They argue it would ensure farm workers are not intimidated by their bosses about how to vote when deciding whether or not to join a union. This all comes after a weeks long march led by the United Farm Workers Union from here in Kern County to the steps of the Capitol, nearly a month long vigil being held there on the steps. And get this, Governor Gavin Newsom has also signed another bill into law that would add wine and liquor bottles to its recycling rebate program. California's recycling program currently includes beer cans and bottles, but not wine or spirits containers. Consumers in California pay a nickel each time they buy a 12 ounce bottle or can and a dime for containers over 24 ounces. This law takes effect in July 2024. Well, 17 News, your local election headquarters, and a series of community education workshops continue tonight as county officials engage the public on a proposed one cent sales tax increase. It will appear as Measure K on your November ballot if you live in unincorporated Kern. A workshop will be held tonight at the Shafter Veterans Building. Officials say this tax increase, if approved, would provide additional revenue to maintain and improve vital public safety related services like emergency response, crime prevention, and homelessness with no state strings attached. There are two more workshops happening next week and you can get that list on our website, kgt.com. Meanwhile, 17 News hosting a series of candidate debates over the next six weeks as we count down to Election Day. The first one happening tonight with a debate between the two candidates looking to fill Kern's third district supervisor seat, Jeff Flores and Brian Smith. That debate airing live here at 7 p.m. on TV 17. If there's a question you would like to ask the candidates, email your question to 17news at kget.com and make sure to write 
question for the candidates in your subject line. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.